Dixie Mills trying to shake a little Substance appears trying to shake a little Substance appears Friendship flaws with a solemn sleeping albatross with a solemn sleeping albatross. Shave to the sky and found a marriage morning. Sing for the sake of a union glory. Try to trade comfort for prosperity and swaddle the six stack harmony. And swather the six stack harmony. And swather the six stack harmony. So in one city slicker thrown across the stone, till the bay tree for his grown. Try to keep a love, keep a love that is bone, encased in armor wrapped in smoke. Encased in armor, wrapped in smoke. Sounds hardly live from the overcome. Encased in calico armor, broken. Sounds hardly live from the overcome. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Myrna Sound Stage. Welcome if you're here for the first time. I'm John Dendy, your host. I'm here with the band Rock Gut Wines, which is Andrew Murphy and Evan Manuel. And uh, I know these guys a little bit from playing the same nights. And I'm here with uh, Joseph Running Crane, who I just met today. You guys appear to know each other. Yeah. Yeah. We did, the we did the restaurant industry together <laughs> for a sec. Tell me about it. I was bartending, and you were d doing dishes, I was right? in the dish pit. Yeah, yeah. dish pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Miserable then, existence. Then, yeah. <laughs> Miserable existence. And you were just always, like, slightly moist. <laughs> <laughs> You'd come out and get your I'm shit I'm not drink. sure if I produced this yeah. moisture or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, where was that? I was in Missoula. Yeah, it was called uh, Rumor, I think yeah. is the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, we're going to talk about music, but let's talk about day jobs, um, and let's talk about the last year without any gigs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andrew, what are you doing for work? Uh, so screen printing. We're going to like a print sign shop, um, stickers, embroidery, huh. t-shirts, you know, band t-shirts. I mean, and, uh, any and everything you slap your logo on. Huh. Here in Helena? Have, yeah, here in Helena, yep. So you guys were, um, I knew you when you were in Helena, then you mm -hmm. went to Missoula yep. yeah, yeah. for a little while. Now you're back. Yeah, and we're lucky. Couldn't stay away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What about you, Evan? What do you do for work? I work for uh, Montana Conservation Corps. I'm the senior oh. crew lead over there. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been a, I was a pretty career bartender, barista, service industry worker for a while. And last year I was like, can't do that no more. So I took a job doing backcountry trail work. And I did it, I liked it so much, I did it again this year. I also didn't know if things were going to be clear, safe, or opening up. So now it's kind of hindsight 2020, but... R hindsight 2020, like you took a job where you have to be out in the back country yeah, and you're a musician. Exactly, yeah. Like I would ideally be gigging, or at least like you know weekend gigging, you know. So I have like a normal schedule, but yeah. I'm like out in the back country or like out on projects for like six to nine days at a time, and yeah, and I'm back home. So it's hard to schedule stuff around that. And, wow, I but bet. I love it. I love the work, but not as much as singing, <laughs> singing songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I like to work hard too, but I've turned down a lot of things over the years because. Of being in bands. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, yeah, you gotta be sure. in town. Mm -hmm. Joseph, mm -hmm. I've seen a Facebook post from you that you work <laughs> graveyard yeah. shift at a gas station. Yeah. I mostly took that job so I wouldn't be bored to tears while I'm waiting for school to start. Because in between gigs and um, just savings, like, I'm going to be fine until the next round of... School money starts again, but it's like, I'm not doing anything. So I was like, just went across the street to the gas station. I was like, you guys hiring? And so yeah, graveyard, come on in Monday. I was like, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> so you're, go you're going back to school or you have yeah. been in school? What are back you gonna do? Um, uh, 
like I said earlier, was like uh, the the long game is to be a professional student and get my doctorate at some point, so I can uh, do my grandpa who had his got his a uh, master's from Harvard, and so need to outdo him. <laughs> wow, <Yeah. laughs> education is a competition after all. Yeah, it really oh, is, sure. especially amongst sure. Indians. Yeah. So. <laughs> this first song I want to share with y'all is about was inspired by um, losing a, a cousin of mine, 2019, and. Uh, there's a lot of allusions to a lot of different problems on the res, uh, in case I haven't mentioned that already. I'm from Browning, Montana, um, on the Blackfeet Reservation, and there's some very unique challenges that um, you experience growing up there, both personally and communally. And it was uh, particularly inspired by the, by, uh, by the fact that when we, um, by the time the, the actual service was over and we are bringing the body out to the graveyard, I looked down, and right next to one of those uh, plastic flowers was a, a skull can lid. And then I looked around and I just saw all the garbage around the, the graveyard and thought of the garbage around town and um, heavy feelings, tragic feelings. It's called Dirty Graves. The sun rises just in time to break the stillness of the night While well, I'm keeping my shakes from the sleeping beauty by my side All in all, I can't complain about the choices that I've made So these choices left these voices, they've been picking at my brain When I find that peace of mind, a job that actually pays I'll be waiting for the kids on time on every holiday But nobody can miss nothing if that nothing ever was your sister hasn't called me, but I'll text you and she does Take me away to a dirty grave Where old skull cans and forgotten flowers lay Sing me up high, put me in the ground Leave me on the outskirts of town My car, well, it ain't working. It was working yesterday. I'll get you for the grass and gas next week when I get paid. Count the days and dimes like fifths of wine. I'll slowly dry enough. Drunk and out of time, singing along to come and get your love. When the sun goes down, I circle around the shadows on the wall. Bob and weave the jabs and swings like there's nothing there at all. And nobody can miss nothing if that nothing ever was. I take a swing and leave the outline of the nothing in my blood. And on that day, clean up my grave. Take those flowers and throw them away. Say your goodbyes, but shed no tears. Make it so that I was never here. So what happened to you during COVID year? I mean, how much would you have been playing out? You know, were you playing five nights a week or one night a yeah, week or I one had, night a I month? Had like or... a, I had like a six date run that was um, supposed to be over the better part of a week. And um, yeah, everything went to hell in a handbasket and just canceled everything and like stayed home in Browning. I was living in Browning at the time oh. when everything went down. But is, then that, I, is that where you're, where you're from? Yep, Browning, Montana, Blackfeet Reservation. That's where I'm from. Um, but it was actually kind of nice because it's like speaking of jobs was uh, I signed on as a community organizer with Western Native Voice, um, which is a voter engagement, social advocacy, nonprofit based out of Billings. Yeah. So it was kind of more or less doing the same thing that I did otherwise, which was basically getting paid, you know, 20 plus an hour for like messaging people on Facebook. And like, hey, are you registered to vote? The census year, you counted, you know, so it was a uh, nice in that way where I was just able to stay home and Make a decent living, really. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Nice. What about y'all? I mean, if not for COVID, how much <laughs> were you playing uh, before? 
Less well, than. so <laughs> in in 2019, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. yeah. Yeah. Start, this is a bit of a saga. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. In 2019, we were gonna, we were leaving Missoula. We were going to be on the road doing our thing, and then I broke my neck. Oh. And so I was pretty bedridden for the next six months or so. Yeah, that was a, a bummer. And then by the time we played like our first gig coming back, and then literally a week later, COVID hit. So it was. It's been been about two years now where we haven't been able to do what we want to yeah. do. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> How'd you break your neck? So I was in Hawaii for a wedding, and like, <laughs> long story short, I'm like 40, 48 hours in. I'm on the beach with like all of my family, and I walk into the ocean and I dive into an oncoming wave, and there was just not enough ocean behind it. Um, like oh, I, I grew up no. swimming, so I did like a nice shallow dive, and I think like either, you know the wave pushed me down, or all I remember is diving and then hitting the head and like getting up, and then eventually got to the hospital. And were you able to walk around? I, and I stuff, got right back you... up. Okay. Yeah, I got right. We we didn't go to the hospital immediately. Yeah. But it took you six months in bed. I mean, not 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 six months total, but I mean like like the first three months I was in a collar, and then PT started after that. Um, but the first six months were pretty, like he just couldn't, couldn't stand for too long. Couldn't, yeah. Oh. I abandoned him. I went back to Baltimore. Yeah. <laughs> we quit our jobs and got rid of our apartment. We're like, we're going to go live on the road. Yeah. And then he breaks his neck. And it was like, well, I don't, <laughs> we have, go. I don't have a place to live. I don't, I'm going to yeah. go see my, my mom and my pop in Baltimore. Bye. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. I did want to ask you guys about being a drums, guitar duo. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have a bass player. Nope. You don't have another lead player? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Personally, I, mean, I love two pieces. I have a huge affinity for two pieces. Yeah. Um, I was usually the one playing the guitar on the two piece. Uh, <laughs> so it was kind of fun to have it swapped. Right. Um, I just think it's great when you can truly, two two people can fill an entire, that much space. And then especially since we added the synth, it adds a whole nother level of dynamics and... Emphasis in the right yeah. area. Yeah. Yeah, you're playing the synthesizer. Um, both, both of you are playing the synth, mm -hmm. one synthesizer. Yeah. You yeah. with your feet. Yeah. <laughs> and you with your hands. Yeah, yeah. I suppose just. It really fills it out. I had no idea you were going to do that. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah. that well, was just a big shot. We can still, I'm glad we can still surprise you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I've always liked about two pieces is the fact that um, compositionally, you have to accommodate for like the, the bigger exactly. space that you need yeah. to fill. Yeah, totally. So it's like you can't just be like four on the floor and then yeah. like. A three chord change. And then you, have to, you have to be more, yeah. more creative you have to at times. Yeah. Think about how to fill that sound out yeah, compositionally. Totally. And so that's, yep. there's unique sounds to that's two pieces. Partially, yeah, why I think I enjoy them. So and like much. where to back yeah. off Absolutely. and like where to be forward because it's it's different, you know, yeah, it's very, and all that. And we started out, we had a bass player starting out. It wasn't like the plan. We didn't, right. Andy were like two player. We had a bass player and he just like left and we were like, we could do this on our own. And, yeah. and the synth kind of came later, like all the piano stuff kind of came later. But yeah, and it's just fun. It's a great compliment when. Someone's walking into the stage. They don't, you know, after the fact, they're like, and then I saw there was only two of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's that right. feels real good. When when I was in a two piece as well, it's like mm -hmm. that was one of the best compliments I ever yeah. got. In my whole career was like, I had no idea two people could be that loud. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's talk about let's talk about loud because I played with you guys at the gestures oh, a yeah. lot, oh, yeah. and it was loud. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, how for for your music, how important is it to be loud? Uh, I mean, it depends. I, I, I mean, it's always fun to have to, to have, have your bass drum have that that sub thump. Mm -hmm. It just makes the mm -hmm. world of a difference mm -hmm. as far as having fun playing and feeling it. And but you know, I mean, we'll, we'll we busk on the street, you know, and we're playing quiet the whole time. Um, and so right. we'll, it's 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 just as important as being quiet, I'd say. But it's it's more fun to be loud. Well, you have a lot of I mean, you have a lot of dynamics. You're mm -hmm. kind of doing that. Um, classic thing that I don't know if Led Zeppelin invented it. Mm -hmm. um, Probably not. They stole a lot. But, yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, they stole a lot. <laughs> but uh, they had, I mean, a ton of their songs. That was the formula. Yeah, no, totally. And, you yeah, start, yeah. and, and y'all do that. Yeah, yeah. You, first, first, quiet. Yeah. yeah. Then boom. Then boom. Yeah, totally. Well, that was a Pixies thing, too. That's what oh. was really... Um, a lot of critics brought up with them. There's actually a documentary called Loud, Quiet, Loud, which is oh, like right. their, right. Quiet, loud. Hmm. their their formula. Yeah. Right. Huh. Uh, Evan, mm -hmm. you got a killer amp. I yeah, want to hear killer, about it. Killer is the word. It's a Fender Super 6 Reverb. It's got six tens going down the side. It's it's like this high. It's ginormous. It's. I bought it when I was 16, not really. I was going to lug it around for the rest of my existence. So, uh, but it's. 
it's definitely a window rattler. That's that's what I it's name's Bertha. That's what I call her. Bertha. Bertha. When he says six tens, that means uh, six ten inch. Yeah, speakers. six ten inch speakers. Right. A lot of people that play on electric electric guitar through a one twelve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or two twelves. Yeah, yeah, often two twelves. Yeah. Often two twelves. Yeah. But no, it's pretty big, pretty pretty monster. Unnecessarily big, I would say. I would go adventure. Ah, uh, but there's <laughs> some, that wall of sound though. Yeah. Like I've I've played it. It's the first time I played. Oh my goodness, this is just. I also think it's like a mental trick. Like if you, as like you come to a show and you see that thing on the stage, the guitar and the drums, it's just like a trick. A little little more volume. Yeah, this is gonna be loud. This is gonna be. It's like a presence thing. It's like a. It's like a mental trick. It's like a preamble. Yeah, exactly. Know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. to do called Tools of the Trade. And I was intrigued because uh, there's this thing that Evan is playing with his feet. And uh, you're looking at it right now. What is that thing, Evan? It's a mini controller for the synth that Andrew uses on that side. So it's just controlled by a little cable. It's connected by a little cable. And then it controls. It's just a basic octave and a half of a piano. And you just like hit it with your feet while I'm trying to sing and pick a guitar at the same time. That's awesome. <laughs> We've had a few synthesizers on this show lately. What do you like about this one? 
Well, um, we got it because it's, it's analog, which is nice. So it has a nice warm sound. Um, and then really because it was compact, it had the MIDI output so that we can both control the one keyboard, one instrument, as opposed to having multiple. I think the goal is eventually to get me my own synth so we can do like different sounds and stuff. But this is kind of what we've settled on for now. No. <laughs> Oh, that sounds awesome. I'm continually blown away by the talent and craftsmanship on this show. Yeah. And you're doing it again, man. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about guitar playing um, for just a second. Andrew, do you play the guitar? I do, yeah. That was actually my, more of my instrument. Like drums, drums is the first, first time I've ever played drums in the band was with Evan. Mm -hmm. um, Are you any good at guitar? I mean, I, I, can, I can do my thing. I can, I can hold myself. I've, I've played plenty of shows with the guitar, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, I was pretty impressed with the guitar playing today um, from you two. Well, a couple X. And it looks like we have, we're seven, this, this group is 75% good guitar players. <laughs> 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 and one other one. Um, <laughs> you finger pick an electric guitar. Yeah. And there's not a, I mean, that's less common yeah, totally. than playing with a pick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just picked up a banjo to impress a girl and and just happened. I was like, I can do that on the Did guitar. Did you think that was going to work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do that on the girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like 19. I was like, I can do this. And then I moved here and started picking with Andrew. And I was like, I can do that on my electric guitar and just kind of. Kept going, just like I got. I learned how to finger pick. I got grounded one summer when I was like a kid. I got grounded for the whole summer. <laughs> yeah. What'd you do to get that? Uh, my dad said, "Say another word, and you're grounded for the rest of the summer." And I said, "Another word." <laughs> dad, oh. dead in the eyes. <laughs> like, well, at least you were word. smart yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, Not yeah. my finest moment, or my finest moment. However you want to look at yeah. it, but. Um, well, yeah. it worked out. For yeah, you. so I just like sat in my room all summer and just doom doom, you know, did yeah. the, the, the thumb picking and came out a better picker for it. So thanks, Dad. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> did you point up to the sky? No, no he's fine. No, he's fine. He's, no, he's great. He did. He did have a heart attack like oh. three or four years ago, but he's fine. He's great. He's up. He's a dad. He's a grandpa now. He's yeah. he's one. Tom's great. Tom's wonderful. Okay. Right. Ten out of ten. Good. Good. Oh well. That's, wow. Yeah, what yeah. a thing to say yeah, about your pop. amazing. I love my pop. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah. Well, um, I mean, who else does that? I mean, a local guy who does that is Max Hay. Max Hay plays yeah, with his fingers. Hay, yeah. Right? A very uh, good guitar player. Chad Atkins player. would be like the main, oh, like that kind of like, yeah. you know, that guy, Merle Haggard a little bit, but he, like, he does all kinds Mark of stuff. Knopfler. Yeah, Mark oh, Knopfler. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, Mark that's Knopfler. A big one, Mark Knopfler. Oh, who's the other country guy that does it? He, but he's like the hee haw guy, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, uh, like uh, Roy, he, yeah, Roy, Roy Clark? Roy, Roy Clark. Clark, yeah, yeah, that guy. He just, man, that guy can oh, anything. Well, Roy Clark's an absolute genius. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of the phenomenal. best players. Yeah. Oh, banjo, too. Yeah, one no, of yeah. the best I players. Play anything. Oh, my yeah. God. Astounding. And I just knew him because he was on Hee Haw, and my yeah. grandparents watched it. Yeah, my dad would be like, watch this old show. I'd be like, watch this guy. And I'd be like, what is this time? But it had, like, watch this guy play guitar. And I'd be like, okay. <laughs> one lyric that caught me today. I'm going to ask you guys about some lyrics. Yeah. Okay. Ready. Um, nobody can miss nothing if that nothing ever was. Nothing never was. Nothing never Negative. was. It, nothing it's never was. intentionally trying to compound negatives. <laughs> All those ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, when I when I talk to him, it's like talking to you. That's one that caught me. I what? like I like drinks from the well in the mid shelf. Sometime. Oh, that's my, oh, yeah, that's such a good one. That's what's <laughs> your? Um, and I've never asked this question of anybody, but what's what's a lyric that you sang today that you're actually proud of and it's hard guys to talk nice about yourself yeah it is but just uh, say something nice about yourself about something that you wrote um so uh Imi Da the, the second song that you referenced there it um and, and that's a word for dog yeah right? word for dog yeah and um I, I spent like four years like torturing myself like to write that song because of, like the story was so succinct and like so unadulterated like mm -hmm. it, it seemed to be tailor built for a song and so, like, when I sat down to actually write it, it just, it was one of those rare things where it just kind of wrote itself, you know? Oh. And, like, it's... I thought like, you were going to say the opposite. I thought like you were going to say it was impossible. Yeah, oh! Yeah, really? Yeah. Wow. Oh. And, uh, but the, and so the line that I'm really proud of in that song is, um, I hope that you're walking in good health and shoes. I hope death is to winning as living was to lose. 
I'm proud of that, and I didn't write it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the inside rhymes, and then like uh, the uh, um, analogous nature of that phrase. Um, do y'all both write lyrics? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So you write toge yep. together. Yeah. yeah. What stands out to you about the lyrics you sang today? Do you got one? I got one. Yeah, you should go first okay. then. <laughs> <laughs> I love the third verse of uh, Hometown Syndrome, which is the first song we played. Um, and it's shave to the scalp on a marriage morning, sing for the sake of a union glory, try to trade comfort for prosperity and swaddle a six stack harmony. And the last time I felt any semblance of, you know, what my life was on track is my friend Julie's wedding. Um, and I, I wore, I better, I would wear Willie Nelson braids to her wedding and shave them after she got married. It oh. was like, well, then I just shaved my head completely off. Yeah. And so that's what that whole thing is referencing. But that was the day Andrew left for the wedding that he broke his neck at that day. Like after that, the like key left. And then two days later, I got a call from his dad and was like, you have to cancel your gig this weekend because Andrew's not going to be able to drum. He's in the hospital. And I, I don't know if it's like proud is the word, but it just stands out to me as yeah. like a, this day is significant. And this, these lyrics are about this day. And sounds like a really ambiguous feeling. Yeah, oh, it was a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, it's like good and bad. Very, <laughs> yeah. the, the only way to describe it is significant. Yeah, right? yeah like pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine's a quick one. So the we have a song called Ava, and it's about our piano. Yeah, yeah. Um, I heard and, that. And so like the first lyric is just put the money on Ava, which was we would put money on Ava to go get marijuana <laughs> for the other person like you know what's that put, 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 what it, it was for, you know it was, it put the money on ava for the weekly fix and and it mostly it just reminds me of uh, the the time we were living in this tiny little two bedroom house and the, the piano that we got we're we're staring out our out our back window which is like right there on the alleyway into our neighbor's garage and he's like struggling with this piano and we're like we should ask him for help does he need help so we just shout through the window hey do you need help and the guy turns around he's like do you want it? <laughs> and we're like, yes. yes? <laughs> Check, please. So it just, it reminds me of that. And it's, I just, it, it, it reminds me of a lot of stories. And like, I have very vivid images when listening and playing that song. There's a bird who took shelter in our kitchen from a, or the neighborhood cat in that house. And he'd be like, yep. there's yep. a lion that uh, find some sanctuary, you briny little bird. And like, that's a, huh. that's, a that's a line yep. from that too. Yeah. You said it was a bird? Yeah, it was yeah. a bird. He like came running from like the cat. raced like, in and like it was. Yeah. Huh. I mean, we have like pictures and videos. You know, Blackfeet, yeah. bird flies into your house, you have to kill it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. We saved it. We saved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I walk real fast, fast as I can. Well, I always know where I gotta go. Itinerary and handle, baby, when we go on a Sunday stroll. I never know just where I wanna go. Cause only you can slow me down like you do I talk real fast, thoughts can't keep up Bass backwards, discombobulated So I stu 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 shut up, oh baby, when I'm feeling down You come around, I'm the smoothest talking man in town Cause only you can slow me down like you do I drive real fast, fast as the wind. Well, I hit these gigs and split so I can get back home again. Oh, honey, money comes and goes. So it goes, a flow of time, don't change that on. Cause only you can slow me down like you do. I eat real fast, I shovel it on down Cause it always tastes much better when I know it's not around When you got something in the pot You know I savor every flavor that I've got Cause only you can slow me down like you do Cause only you can slow me down Do. 
you very much. Uh, this next song is also about my hometown, Browning. Um, particularly, it's, uh, it's about the, uh, what some would refer to as a res dog, uh, stray dog problem. We prefer to call it a diverse and thriving ecosystem of stray dogs in Browning. So much so that um, the stray people often tend to get adopted by these stray dogs. Um, this is about uh, one of those stray people who loses a friend and finds some solace in a, in a canine companion. This is uh, called imita, which is the Blackfeet word for dog. There is a dog that follows me around town Keeps me company when friends and work can't be found Sure don't judge me for the shape that I'm in don't wear a collar and he smells like the wind He defends me from weakness Like no savior's done We sleep in the day and at night We run Where the snow falls quiet on browning the night Street lights send up red hot pillars of light. They give off no warmth, like the night that you died. And your only sin was just sleeping outside. And I hope that you're walking in good health and shoes. I hope death is winning, is living. What's to lose? This dog with no name, he eats what he finds. A drink from the wheel in the midshell sometimes. And he'll sit in front of me like he's waiting to play. His ears will twitch slightly if I mention your name. And I know it's just thinking. It's probably not true. But when I talk to him, it's like talking to you. Joseph, I just want to ask you about the background photo on your Facebook page. I know that may be a lame question. The big band? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know too much about that photo besides the fact that the band leader was um, my great-grandfather on my mom's side. Oh. Edward Paul. It's a, it's a cool photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And apparently I have a couple other family members in that picture oh. as well. Yeah. So... It's funny, like I don't come from my immediate family. There's no musicians. I learned uh -huh. how to play guitar from my cousins, yeah. and then taught myself drums um, around that same time. I was like 12, 13 years old. But have you are... played drums in bands? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I played in a nice. two piece called uh, Bridge Builder. Actually, huh. you're in Bridge. I've seen Bridge Builder so many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah. It may have been a different you guys incarnation. Oh, really. sure, but I definitely been, like a bunch of people in that band. But yeah. Were you a punk? I, I got a feeling you were a punk rock kid. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Bridge yeah. Builders kind of was kind of a punky. Well, my first band was called God Damn It Boy Howdy, <laughs> uh, and our, uh, we released a seven inch on Minor Bird Records in like 2011, like cool. ten years ago. Oh. And it was called God Damn It Boy Howdy is Res Punk. Oh, so, nice. yeah. Wow. I, I did. I did, uh, I did you punk got it right. Yeah, I just like listen. <laughs> I had a feeling. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can see a punk kid running. <laughs> yeah. Punk kid, I'm but I, did, I did punk and metal yeah, and like yeah. hardcore for years, yeah, yeah. playing drums and guitar for. A lot of different bands. All right, that leads us right into the silly part of the show. Oh. And at first I want, <laughs> no. and, and it's not gonna be that silly. Mm. I'm sorry, it's not gonna be silly <laughs> enough. Um, I've been listening to the radio a lot. And so I want a yes or no on music genres. Okay. okay. Bluegrass. Sure. No. <laughs> yes. We've talked about that. Yes, yes, what did you say earlier today? Uh, it's my dream, ba like secondhand gig is like a backup singer in a bluegrass band, something like that. Like pick a banjo, play a guitar, sing, not have to worry about it. That's my. I'm a no unless you're the best. 
bluegrass band in the world. Mm. You know, I mean, if, if it's you're live. just Del McCurry yeah. or you're Dead Bill Monroe or yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. I started out doing that bluegrass. Yeah. Uh, the blues. No. Yeah. No. That's my brother. That's how I learned how to play guitar. I mean, I I would. Like I unconventional would, blues for me, I'm I'm all like white stripes and black keys. Like, like if it sounds bluesy, but I, I if it's, oh, if it's yeah. too walky and it's like face. well, and if, if live, I'll I'll watch anything live. Like yeah, beat yeah. the shit out of it. I, what you're talking about is from the blues. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blues. Uh, oh, oh, I mean, like I mean, like that's that's the real big thing for me is like especially with bluegrass that I said just now was like no flat no right is it's. So many people who claim to play these styles of music aren't doing it mm, anymore. Yeah. And so it's like, so many times someone would be like, it's like, oh, I love the blues. I love the white stripes. It's like, no. no and that's like, the common, that's like the yeah. common conception. Huh, of weird. Now, right? Yeah. Or it's like, I never call them a blues band, even though they're, they're, they're from it. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, I've, I've, I've definitely heard that before. Or he, so well, he, he would say he floats around blues chord progressions. Uh -huh. That's how, like, in an interview. That's, that's, that's always the well, frustrating thing. And that's why it's always like a flat no for me. It's like, I don't want to be associated with like, I don't. I don't ever want to say to somebody, "I like bluegrass or I like the blues," because people will get the wrong idea about it. I would get like get home from high school, get off work, oh. get off high school, and then I would come home. I would put on a BB King album, and I would just try and play note for note. I would try to emulate the way BB King played. Well, like, that's as cool. a teenager, yeah, like, it was, cool. and that was an everyday thing for me. So I mean, that stuff like Big Bull Brunzi, like that old school, that like that stuff. That is my bread and butter. Like that is what I, yeah. I came up on. So yes, yes to the blues. <laughs> I was into all this stuff at one time. Mm -hmm. By the way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Done and it comes and goes. You know, it goes through phases. Like, um, do we all love hip hop? Yes. I used to hate it. Big. Oh yes. my no. goodness. No. Yeah, I, no. I love it, it now though. Yeah, I don't. I don't find it interesting. I don't find it engaging. Yeah, I think it depends for me. I like the beats. That's, yeah, let's see, I like the beats. I couldn't get it there. What was a no standard melody. white guy thing to say. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what the job description <laughs> said. That's what the job description said yeah. when I got the job. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that's what I applied for. <laughs> it's, but no, seriously, that's like that's like a very common thing when it comes to like not just white people. It's like anybody who is God, I'm gonna dig myself into a hole right do now. It. Someone just do it. Come, someone's kind of square. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as soon as they're like, "Oh, I'm okay with hip hop. I like the beats," and it's like I was that way for a long time. No, I, I'm not trying. Yeah. To, I'm not trying. Yeah. To no, that's great. Right yeah, it's like, yeah. but I was that way for a long time as well. I didn't like rap for a long time either because it was like the soundtrack to me getting bullied in high school. Really. Yeah, yeah. My reintroduction to it was in 2016, actually, and um, where I actually found some stuff that I liked. And, you know, I'd been listening to Corey Brannon and John Prine and these, like, wordsmiths, these yeah. dudes who were really good at lyrics. And then someone said, oh, Kendrick Lamar just put this out, and that was mm -hmm. Tampa Butterfly. Mm -hmm. And you listen to those lyrics, and you're just like, wow, this is John Prine on crack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it's amazing. Oh, I, uh, I absolutely like, the, buy that. That's like, why I listen to rap, is yeah. the lyrics And, like, so I'm not good. saying it's, like, not poetry. I'm not saying it's not music. It just, like, it very rarely grabs me. And it's, like, sometimes it does. Like, sometimes, like, I, I'll listen to, like, when I go out dancing, I want the most ratchet hip-hop. Like, that is, like, <laughs> absolutely. Like, that's what I want. That's the but, yeah, in this house. Exactly. So, like, <laughs> that's what I want to dance to. Comma, but, like, in the car, like, it's kind of not my, yeah, it's just not really my jam. Like, it's not yeah. my thing. Yeah. 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 No accounting for taste, man. Yeah, right. These are all new, new tunes uh, on our forthcoming sophomore album. This one's called Ava, and it's about our piano. Just put the money on Ava for the weekly fix. She was a reeking of sunlight. On the day she moved in, these girls by you play her. These hands are so who call dependent on each other. Baptized, wielding blood and thunder. Waiting, broken, leaping on again. Been wasted, this hatred bound to end. Come teach us hymns on Ava in a singer's spot. Someone screaming the rosary in the parking lot Said if they could just touch the hem of his gown A month and leave this bad apartment Flooded up with Satan's laundry Wasted, broken, bleeding on the head Been waiting for a savior to come again 
Don't put the money on Eva Every single bet If the sex of cicadas from the piano bench There is a rum in the pantry And goblins in the backyard again And then it stumps Perpetually speaking mums Find some sanctuary brine in the bird It's common So we don't know what it's worth And the sights on Eva It's common sense That the plight of an actor Is our only defense Before the barking Coming, pouring presents We are called the Lord Forget Thank you Thanks friends Because it is all friends here Joseph Ronan Crane, what do you got coming up? What are you working on? Um, not much, honestly. Mm -hmm. I kind of went through this like that drunken apotheosis recently where it was like that kind of stuck with me. What's apotheosis mean? Like a like a like a a a, 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 a revelation. Oh, that okay. would be the better word. I was thinking like a fever dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that works yeah. too. <laughs> but I mean like I think that's the better definition, but I mean like um I'm kind of tired of making bar owners money for them. Yeah. Where it comes down to it, where it's like, they make 15, they clear 1,500, $2,000 a night. They're like, you can have your tips or here's $50, you know? Yeah. I don't want to do that anymore. And it's like, and so I, I, I made this angry Facebook post about it. Yeah. And it was like, I, I, I was saying, to, I was saying to these guys earlier, was like, maybe there's something to like my mom's like um, manifestation theories. She's like very hippy dippy. And like, oh. you know, she's like, put it into the universe and it'll happen to you. And so I like, Put it out there, and then like I got the call for this gig the next day. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, <laughs> so I mean, like there may be some some credence to the whole manifestation thing, but I am not looking forward to like having to take gigs out of necessity. And I'm thankfully financially set up well enough where it's like I don't have to. Um, there's this great gig that I do for uh, the park service called uh, Native America Speaks, mm -hmm. where I just go in and like talk to uh, white tourists about like there's some bad shit going on down the road and here's why it's probably your fault <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> it's so like and then i get paid pretty well for that and mm -hmm. paid pretty well for this and um want to release a record probably within the next year uh but beyond that i don't really plan on playing out that often mm -hmm. so just kind of over it i changed over the last year yeah as to what how much i want to play yeah yeah um, but what about uh, you guys, Rat Gut Wines? What do you have coming up? First of all, I just want to say I disagree. <laughs> they, can, they can take all advantage of me they want. <laughs> I will play any bar, any time, for any amount of money. Look into the camera and say, call me like, tomorrow. Anytime. Excuse me. Pardon me. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't have that. I don't harbor that issue. I'm like, what's 50 bucks? Sure. That's, that's like, that's, that's a half a tank of gas. And you're, you're, food, you're killing it, it for the rest yeah, of us, yeah, buddy. Yeah, you're listen, killing it for the rest quick, of us. Cheap and easy to work with. That's our mantra. That is our, our little whole bit. thing. A <laughs> little bit, slightly. Um, we have a gig next week, a week from today, which is the 12th of June. It's in downtown Helena on the uh, last chance Gulch. Right off by, uh, outside of the Hawthorne 10 Mile. Mm -hmm. Then we have a gig in Big Sky, a Tips Up, I think, coming up. There's another one. Well, and then we have just some in the works for oh, being, some in being the works. Yeah. Got recently approached talk. for some, been approached some for a couple. in Missoula. So, like, keep your ear to the ground. Uh huh. And uh, did I hear that you're going to record? We're, we're working on you know. finishing. We have at least, at least half of it finished, and then, like, the other half's, like, Ideas. squishy. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> this could change. This could change. Yeah. This could all change. <laughs> I just want to say you guys have been delightful guests. Sweet. You're all clearly brilliant. Oh. Um, Stop. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's been a delight for me. Uh, Joseph Running Crane, thank you for coming here. Thanks for having right, me. Right, got wines. Thank you for coming here. It's like a five minute drive. It's really. been a fun yeah, time for us. Time for me. <laughs> we appreciate you watching the Myrna Soundstage. Consider supporting the Myrna Loy for crying out loud. Watch us next time. I 
I've been putting your drinks with water all night so you're sober enough to go home. Though you came with a friend, you said time and again that you're going home alone. And you don't have a car and you live too far to walk in heels like that. When the lights come on, oh, the way it's too long, at last call to call a cab. And I'll give you whiskey if you ask, but I'll give you coffee after that. From our only mug with these orders piling up. And the time slips by and the night unwinds. Heard you slur your words as you walk by with those neon blues cutting through you. You're getting sick again as your girlfriend's friends take their pictures in the mirror and you can't help but ask yourself what the hell's keeping you here where too many nights of neon lights well they don't replace the moon and a late night friends still in your bed don't fix a morning before noon you know i'll spot you in a pinch i'll find your friends if you get sick i won't give a if you can't afford a tip I might give myself a way to say Don't want to watch you hurt yourself this way To watch you fall at night, sleep all day I'll buy you a coffee if you want Take a few turns around the block no neon blues for a night or two and take my word if it still hurts to find another place to work no more neon blues for me or you thank you very much